Hello everyone. We're going to do a bit of a quick video here for a key stage four uh, chemistry topic. Now this one is on paints and pigments. Now when I'm not making these videos one of my favourite pastimes is to do some pencil sketching, pencil drawing and painting. And one of the questions that uh, I used to wonder is what actually is a paint? What is inside a paint? What's its composition? What makes it dry? What makes it uh, stick together? And that's what this video aims to essentially answer. What is within the paint? Now you can see here that I'm drawing a very, very quick sketch. Essentially just of a lovely environmental scene. We've got a nice tree, we've got some grass, we've got a river. And we've got all these different colours on this particular picture. And the reason why I'm putting all these colours in place is because the characteristic colour that we get in a paint comes from what are called pigments. But the pigment is only one of three key components within the paint. So what we're going to do, we'll look at the three key components, we'll talk about what they are and why they are present. I think we're going to pretty much finish this little picture here. Let's put a nice sun in place. There we go, we've had berries on the tree. There's my nice little canvas on the left. So let's think about what actually is a paint. Now, a paint is a type of mixture, a special type of mixture called a colloid. So we're just going to make a note of that here. So it's a type of mixture called, and we'll just put that word in bold, then capitals, called a colloid. Now, a colloid is a mixture where you have particles of one substance mixed and dispersed with particles of another substance but they are not dissolved in it. So that's a key thing there, we'll just make a note of that. So it's where you've got particles of one substance that are mixed and dispersed, we'll just put with those of another. But as I said, the key thing here to remember with a colloid is that they are not dissolved in it. Now, an, an interesting thing just to know about colloids is that the particles that we're referring to here are very, very small. Now, because they're so small, they actually don't settle out at the bottom. So the components don't separate out so easily. Because the particles are small, they're too small to settle at the bottom and, any, and get kind of any kind of sedimentation at the bottom. So they just stay dispersed and mixed up. And that's what this colloid is. And that's essentially what a paint is. A paint is just this type of mixture that we call a colloid. Now I've referred to pigments, but let's think of the three components, three key components that make up this colloid. So I'll put here three key components. So let's list the three key components that we've got in our colloid. Now the first one, as I said, was the pigment. The pigment is the thing that gives the paint its characteristic colour. And we've got different types of pigment. I'm going to come on to that shortly. The second most important thing we need in this colloid is what's called a binding medium. So we'll just put that in. Binding medium. Now the binding medium is a liquid polymer that hardens to form this continuous layer when the paint dries. So as the paint's drying, it hardens, we get this continuous layer forming to give it that sort of hard, dried uh, appearance, if you like. Then we need a third thing, and that third thing is key. The third thing in our colloid is a solvent. Now, the solvent dissolves the binding medium and it actually makes the paint more fluid. It gives it some fluidity so we can actually use it and we can actually put it onto this canvas like I've got on the right here. So there are three components. We've got pigment, 
we've got a binding medium, and we've got a solvent. But there are a few different examples of paints, different types of paint. Any artist will know that there's different paints for different styles of art. And two types I just want to go into. So I'm just going to EG here, because I just want to talk through two particular examples. One of the type of paints I want to refer to are the emulsion paints. Now, emulsion paints are water-based. So they have a solvent that is water. So I'll just put that in brackets. They've got a water solvent. Now, when they dry, the water actually evaporates. So that's how they dry, evaporation of the water, evaporation of this solvent. Another type of paint that people may be familiar with are the oil paints. Now, in the oil paints, what you have essentially are the pigments dispersed in actual oil, and that may itself be dissolved in a solvent. So as well as having a pigment, what we actually have is oil. So the pigment is in oil, and that may be in a solvent. Now again, the solvent evaporates as the paint is drying, but what I would leave behind is this pigment and oil, all the particles of which are dispersed with one another. Now, things react with the air, the oxygen in the air, and we say they become oxidised. Now, this is what happens to the oil. The oil oxidises and it forms this hard film. So there are just two examples of different types of paints and how they, they kind of work. So all paints have oil within, with the pigment in its colloid. And emulsion paints have a water-based solvent in that colloid. Remember, that colloid is the key word, particularly in exams. They like to define what that is, and we've got the definition at the top there. Now, as I said, I just wanted to talk about two particular types of pigment, two important pigments that often exam boards uh, like to ask about, and that's the thermochromic and phosphorescent pigments. So we're just going to make a note about those two. So the first pig type of pigment I want to talk about are the thermochromic. Now, as the name suggests, Thermo means heat and chrome is colour. So these are pigments that are sensitive to temperature. So if the paint were to be heated or cool down, we get a colour change. So the colour change is depending on the temperature. And you can imagine if you're boiling water in a kettle, having a paint that lets you know when it's boiled or when it's got hotter is certainly very useful. So there are th thermochromic pigments. The second type of pigment worth a mention are the phosphorescent pigments. Now you might be familiar with the term phosphores. When something phosphoresces it glows. So what we're talking about here are pigments that glow in the dark. So they absorb light energy, store it and release it slowly over a period of time. Now certain watch faces we know glow in the dark. The sort of dials as they move around so when the lights go out these phosphorescent pigments emit this light energy and that is actually painted on. Now, uh, many years back, they actually used to use radioactive paints, but clearly that had its own dangers. So phosphorescent pigments are much, much safer to use. But they've got two different types of pigments, one that emit light and one that is heat dependent. But the key thing is that along with this pigment, this thing that provides color to the paint, we need a binding medium and we need a solvent. And those three together form what's called a colloid and that is the key component of a paint, that's what essentially paints are. Okay, so I hope all that helps.